Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I am sitting in my front yard food forest in my Portland, Oregon garden, zone 8B. I've been doing a number of videos where I talk about the various fruit tree guilds that I have in the hopes that um, I can encourage you all and let you know that there is a ton of freedom in fruit tree guild design. And the more we think flexibly, the more we think uh, about having the freedom to tweak and change and customize our fruit tree guild design, the better permaculture we will have. A guild is a permaculture method of companion planting for your fruit and nut trees. And there are some sets of design concepts you can use, but I don't want you to feel that you are rigidly trapped within some strict set of rules. In permaculture, we focus on site-specific design. I've done a number of videos lately about some of my fruit tree guilds, including pawpaws and bush cherries and apples, and you're welcome to scroll back through those. Uh, I will link to them uh, intermittently throughout this video. But I have been sharing these guild designs with you all in the hope that uh, it will encourage you to have flexibility in your own garden design. That we don't have to adhere to a strict set of rules when it comes to guilds. You can companion plant with a huge diversity of species and still support your fruit trees and still get yields of things you want out of your garden like additional food crops, herbs, uh, insect attractors, and beautiful flowers. Today I thought I would talk about a second pawpaw guild that I have behind me and why it looks very different from my other pawpaw guild. Now, this is a much more mature uh, fruit guild. There are woody shrubs and herbaceous perennials that are fully mature in this section. And so it will give a good contrast to the other pawpaw video I made where I was reworking it, took out a bunch of things and had planted all new things. So let me show you what's going on in this guild. And if uh, you are growing pawpaws or other fruit trees in your garden, maybe it will give you some inspiration for some of the possibilities of things you can underplant your trees with. Look at all the baby pawpaws that are set all over this tree. I'm super excited. I have been hand pollinating my pawpaws religiously every afternoon and now I have a really good fruit set on two of my three pawpaws so I'm really excited about that. back from my pawpaw tree I am under my purple robe locust here in the shade and you can get a good view of the guild. So there's the pawpaw tree. This is an area that originally had annual veggies in it. In fact my whole front yard originally had annual veggies. I will be doing a video soon on succession here in the front yard and it was one of the first areas that I focused on establishing woody and herbaceous perennial support plants. So this area is quite mature. So to support my pawpaw, which is a tap-rooted uh, North American native, the only member of the custard apple that grows in temperate regions, I have put with it some shrubby perennials. Starting here, I have goji berry and wolfberry which are both um, not there to support the pawpaw. They're there because it was the only place that was sheltered enough in my yard and had the right microclimate for growing gojis here in Oregon. So if you saw my cattle panel arch video, you know that I put in this arch recently so I could provide support for my really happy gojis in this warm, sheltered microclimate. So sometimes our guilds are imperfect and we have to put things, especially if we live in an urban area with a small garden, sometimes we have to plant things that aren't necessarily support species next to our fruit trees because that is the spot where this plant needs to thrive. So you can see it's right next to my papa. Behind it, I have uh, Russian Bucking Comfrey. I grow at the base of pretty much all of my fruit trees. Great pollinator 
plant, great bee food for native and honeybees. This is a chop and drop plant that is rich in nitrogen and potassium and other trace minerals and it will be chopped down for mulch. Next to it, I have a very large aronia. You can check out my video on aronia berries. Great companion plant for any fruit tree guild. They flower early before my pawpaws do. They provide good food for pollinators. They provide an additional fruit crop for me. They're very low maintenance and don't require extra watering. If you have a fruit tree that perhaps needs a little bit of shelter, a aronia berry is a great plant that you can put near it for a windbreak or to provide a little bit of shade. Behind my aronia berry is a native mock orange. Yes, this is a path that's very crowded. I like it lush and to feel like a jungle. That is at the back of this guild. I'll be doing more about this later. This is real shady at the back of this guild. And underneath this mock orange, I have a number of native shade loving plants planted. Here you can see that I have a very happy rhubarb. It is now seven years old. This is a nameless variety I got from a friend of a friend. Love rhubarbs next to my fruit trees because this big leaf captures rainwater and funnels it down into the base of the plant. So if you have it near your fruit trees, it is funneling water down to the base of the plant. I had to switch to voiceover for the rest of this section of the video because my neighbor decided to run his weed eater. Now here below the rhubarb in an area that is now quite shady, I have just this spring added geranium nodosum, which is a shade tolerant geranium. It will have pink flowers that really bring in the honeybees and bumblebees, and it will be a great ground cover to conserve water. This whole bed is a modified hookle bed using maple logs. It really does a good job of holding in the water and all around the edges of the maple logs, the native coastal strawberries proliferate. They love all these little cracks and crevices around the edges of the bed. One of my favorite native ground covers. In this area, I also let Columbine freely self-sow. It is a delicate, lovely ornamental flower that is also edible. Here you can see it has expressed its own genetic diversity and has chosen to produce white blossoms. It also comes up in pink and maroon and purple in this bed. Now for many years when my woody shrubs and the pawpaw tree were smaller, I grew tomatoes in this bed, but now it's a little bit overgrown and too shady to fit in those kinds of annual veggies. I have recently added some bearded iris cuttings you can see here. They are a brilliant orange that came from my mother's garden and I feel like they will add some visual interest here. Culinary oregano is a great understory choice for a fruit guild, providing herbs for the gardener and flowers for the bees in abundance. Along with the oregano, I also grow winter savory in this bed, another great low growing culinary herb that is suited for most guild locations. So that's a look at one of my three pawpaw gilts here in my food forest in Portland, Oregon. Hope that helps you get a look at some of the possibilities for things you can utilize in your guilds and also helps you see that it's really hard to go wrong in a fruit tree guild if you focus on supporting the needs of the tree, if you focus on growing plants that you will use and that produce a useful yield for you. If you focus on uh, having insect uh, pollinator attractor plants and beautiful flowers, you have so much potential, so many possibilities for what can go into a guild. Throughout the rest of the year, I will keep showing you some of my other guilds. Again, give you some tips and pointers and uh, 
demonstrate what things have worked and have not worked in my guilds and how I utilize the plants that grow there. If you got something out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please uh, consider subscribing and check out my Patreon in the description. Thanks.